you may still be asking yourself, we're living in the technology era. We can tap to pay just about anywhere we go. We can order our groceries online. We can even send money to each other right from our phones. And I bet most of you are watching this video on your smartphones right now. So why can't we vote on our phones? Well, the answer is... Hey, did you know that election cycles in America happen to fall on every even numbered year? Millions of Americans line up at voting booths every two years. The lines are usually long and can sometimes take hours to get a vote in. And luckily, if you're planning on being away, you can opt for an absentee ballot, which gets mailed to you. And these are two methods by which we can place votes. But you may be wondering, why can't I just vote on my phone? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just vote from anywhere? I wonder, would this increase voter turnout in America? Since the 19th century, Americans have been voting with paper ballots. It's surprising to think that we're still using what would be considered antiquated methods. But hold on just a second. There actually have been some advancements in voting. A typical election day usually looks like this. After a long wait, you're directed to an area to pick up your ballot, and the tables are likely organized by last name. Someone will check your ID, verifying that it's you, and then you proceed to a voting booth area that allows you to place your vote. Once a booth frees up, you walk over, you can make your selections, privately of course, and afterwards you move on to a scanning device which you can use to cast your vote. Now, in this situation, the paper ballot themselves are safe for audits and recounts. And this brings up an important concept around voting and that is the audit trail. We need to be able to prove that a vote was actually made. It's like getting a receipt when you purchase something at a store. Now, some jurisdictions may use a different machine to tabulate votes called the Direct Recording Electronic Voting Machine, or DRE for short, and basically this allows you to input your votes using a touchscreen. This has a verification step at the end to make sure you have made the right selections, and then you're able to submit your vote. Now, some of these machines may print out a paper ballot, creating a verified paper audit trail. And as you can see so far, each of these methods leaves some sort of paper trail. Some places may have ballot marking devices, which does exactly what the name implies. They simply mark selections and print out a ballot which is then tabulated using a scanning device or they're simply just hand counted. They do not, however, record any votes and simply just print out a ballot. And then the ballot themselves are just like the receipts we talked about earlier. And finally, some smaller jurisdictions only use paper ballots and then they hand count all of the votes. Now, I've mentioned a few things here, but what all methods have in common is that they ensure that votes are in fact made by the person whose name is on the ballot. There's some sort of audit trail and everyone has a designated place where they're able to vote. But you may still be asking yourself, we're living in the technology era. We can tap to pay just about anywhere we go. We can order our groceries online. We can even send money to each other right from our phones. And I bet most of you are watching this video on your smartphones right now. So why can't we vote on our phones? Well, the answer is, it's actually already happening. Not in the US, of course, but believe it or not, citizens of Estonia, a country in Northern Europe, have been voting online since 2005. Yeah, that's over 15 years ago. Citizens can cast their votes anywhere in the world as long as they have an internet connection. They must use their citizen ID numbers to authenticate themselves to the system. And this is done to prevent fraud, of course. Once they're authenticated, they can then submit their vote. Their IDs are removed once the vote is logged to ensure anonymity. So yeah, it's definitely cool that online voting is already a thing in Estonia, but that doesn't mean they haven't run into any issues. Having public facing websites that are accessible anywhere in the world means that it's subject to getting hacked. In fact, in 2007, Estonia experienced a series of DDoS or distributed denial of service attacks on their online governance system. And this just means that a cyber criminal or a group of cyber criminals sends an overwhelming amount of traffic to a system in order to make the service unavailable to others. So now imagine you went to vote and couldn't access the site until the elections were over. This would be really bad. And this really begs the question of just how secure an online voting system actually is. Now, if we go back to current voting methods, they ensure that votes are one, accessible, 
two auditable, three secure, and four anonymous. And I know a bunch of you may say, well, why is it that I can connect to my bank on my phone? It's literally the one device I trust to do it all. So what is it with elections that make it different? And from a security standpoint, it's just how exploitable the internet and smartphones are. Imagine you open up an app on your phone, you make your selections and hit submit to cast your vote. Now, if someone intercepts your request to the voting system, they can easily pretend that they are you and change your vote without you ever knowing that happened. And how can you argue that it wasn't you that changed the vote? Paper ballots, on the other hand, ensure that there's an audit trail and that you are in fact the person that placed the vote. Remember, as you walk into a facility, you're ID'd and you must sign to verify that it's you. You're registered in one location near your home, which guarantees that it is you, but it also guarantees that you cannot double vote. And the act of checking your ID is that authentication step and that you're physically present. Now, another question arises, and that is, how can an online voting system authenticate you while keeping your vote anonymous? I mean, I'm sure that at some point we could use something like Face ID to do so, but do you really want that? Anyway, the point of this is that it's tough for an online voting system to verify that you are who you say you are without confirming with some sort of biometrics or other forms of identification. I mean, many things can go wrong. For example, you can lose your phone or someone can steal it and that can become a really big nightmare. Your passwords can be stolen or even shared. I mean, what's to stop someone from voting on your behalf? Now, current elections ensure that every voter has a designated location to go to in order to cast their votes. And making voting available on smartphones means that there's an additional voting infrastructure that needs to be managed. Think about the voting machines all over the country and all the work that goes into that. Now imagine the additional infrastructure with things like data centers that would be required to support online voting. Also think about the amount of security, both physical and cyber, that would be required to protect it. Does the government have the resources and time to invest in this undertaking? How would those voting with paper ballots and via the internet be tabulated together? There's so many questions and so many unknowns, and it's actually very plausible to think that at some point, maybe in this lifetime or another, that we may simply be able to vote from home. But only once that technology is available to everyone, it's secure enough, it provides an audit trail and allows for anonymity. What do you think? Do you want to vote from your smartphone? Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.